This teaching you're about to listen to was preached by Jagedis Sunday E and recorded live at God's Family Bible Church, Trinidad. Jagedis Sunday E is the general coordinator of Arabs of Revival Ministries and the School of Discipleship. He is also the missionary pastor of GFBC Trinidad under the leadership of Pastor Abology Akimbo, the general overseer of God's Family Bible Church Worldwide, Palm Coast, Florida. Listen and be transformed. Our dear loving Father, we thank you. We stand in awe of you, Father. What a privilege to call you Father. Thank you for the spirit of your son, the spirit of adoption that you have sent into our heart. And now we can cry, Abba, Father, without any guilt, without any shame, without any fear, without any condemnation. All because of your son, Jesus, and what he did for us. Father, we celebrate you this evening. Lord, we celebrate you. Thank you. Father, thank you. Thank you for your spirit, the spirit of truth that guided us into all truth. And this evening, we just embrace you, Holy Spirit. We'll embrace your work in our heart. We celebrate your ministry. And we we'll open our heart and we we'll receive the truth from you. Even as we look into the power law of liberty, every veil drop, every scale drop, and the entrance of your world bring understanding. It brings clarity to our mind. Thank you, Father. And I want the church to say, Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Last week, we started to look at... Uh, uh, the Paul's instruction and command to the church at Ephesus, uh, which is uh, found in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Please go with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, I'm going straight to verse 18, all right? Uh, we've read uh, the text before but because of time. I just want to go straight to verse 18. Now, so Paul uh, writing to believers like us uh, at Ephesus, and he said to them, Guys, do not drink too much wine. I'm reading easy English Bible. Do not drink too much wine because that will cause bad things. It will stop you ruling yourself properly. But instead, let God's spirit fill you. All right, that's what we are, have been considering. Let God's spirit fill you. And this is part two. Uh, in uh, uh, New King James, uh, the phrase, let God fill you, is also the same thing as be filled with the Spirit. And if you are in church on Sunday, a pastor did a good job explaining to you what it means to let. How many of you remember when he said, you don't get the word of God into your heart by just putting the bed, uh, the, the Bible under your bed, all right, because you don't get the word by osmosis. All right, that, that's, that, that, that sounds very funny to me, but that's, that's the truth. All right. The same thing. And he told us the word let means you allow it, isn't it? I mean, I don't remember what he said. It means you give opportunity to it. And that's what it really means. So it's the same thing. You know, let God's spirit fill you. It means it requires your permission. It is not what God does for all, regardless of our attitude. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It means I have to allow it. If God's Spirit is going to fill me, rule me, control me, govern me, direct my life, I have to make that choice. Do you understand what I'm talking about? All right. So I have to uh, give the Spirit the permission, the opportunity. I've got to allow the Spirit uh, to fill me. And that's what uh, we are considering because it is very important. You cannot live the Christian life without the Spirit. Do you understand what I'm talking about? All right. And if you remember, I'm just going to quickly do uh, a brief recap so that we can make progress uh, this evening. In part one, one of the things we consider very important uh, from God's words that being filled with the Spirit or letting God's Spirit fill me is not the same thing as having the Spirit. Do you understand? So I can have the Spirit and the Spirit does not really have me, all right? The Spirit is just there. It's just passive because I've not given Him permission. I've not allowed Him uh, to really take hold of my life. So being filled with God's Spirit is not the same as having God's Spirit. But rather, uh, we said last week, it is letting God's Spirit have you. That is, letting God's Spirit lead you, guide you, dominate you, govern you, rule you, and control your life. So when Paul said, let God's Spirit fill you or be filled with the Spirit, Paul was writing to a believer who already got the Spirit. So he, he, it's not logical that he's asking them to have the, they've got the Spirit already. 
Alright, because you cannot be a child of God without the Spirit of God. Galatians chapter 4 verse 6, we, we look at this scripture last week. God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our heart. I cry now would have a father. Now you cannot say you have, you are, you are a child of God, you belong to Christ without the Spirit of Christ. Romans 8 verse 9, and if you are a child of God, our body is already the temple of God, and the Bible says, the Spirit of God not dwells in us. 1 Corinthians three sixteen. So you see, you can have the Spirit, but what Paul is saying is, you're not just having the Spirit in your heart, but let the Spirit begin to rule your thinking, alright? Let the Spirit begin to govern your thought pattern. Let the Spirit begin to uh, direct your choices and uh, what you do, places you go, things you do with your time, with your life, with your strength, with your resources. In other words, bringing your life under the control, under the government of the Spirit. That's what Paul is talking about and uh, we uh, stress that last week, alright? So I don't want to overstress it because of time. And also we said to be filled with the Spirit is not seeking for more of the Spirit. Even though we ask for that all the time, but you see, according to the New Testament, you can't get more of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Because what you got at new birth is the whole Holy Spirit. It is not a portion of the Spirit. Under the old covenant, they, they can ask for double anointing. Are you with me? Because it was given to them in measure. But under the new covenant, it is God himself that has come down to live in us. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So I have God inside of me. I have the Spirit of God in me. So I don't ask for more of Him. Are you with me? Because God has no more to give to me. Alright? So being filled with the Spirit is me giving more of myself to the Spirit. Are you with me? So when I'm asking the Spirit, come more. The Spirit is saying, no, you give yourself more to me. Give your mind to me. Let me rule over your feelings and your emotions. Let me control your thoughts and your thinking process. Alright, so when Paul said be filled with the Spirit, what Paul was saying to the believer, and that's what he's also saying to us today, is not to ask for more of the Spirit, but rather to begin to give ourselves. Uh, there are many of us, and you see, this is not difficult to understand. Alright, when you check yourself 24 hours to this time, there are things you have thought that you know, no, 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 I don't want anybody to, 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 to hear or to see or to know about what I'm thinking because you know it is contrary to the word of God. Do you understand? So that cannot be the spirit having you. That cannot be the spirit uh, dominating or controlling your thought. Uh, some of all, there are things that we have said that we have to apologize. I'm sorry, I didn't really mean it. Alright? Do you understand? There are things that we have done that we have to repent of. Now that tells us that the spirit, even though we have the spirit, he does not have us 24-7. He does not have our tongue all the time. That is why we lie. That's why we exaggerate. That's why we abuse. That's why we cause. He does not have our mind all the time. That's why we think evil thoughts. But you see, God wants us to let the Spirit have us increasingly, alright? That every day of my life, I'm yielding more to the Spirit. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The Spirit is having more control over my tongue, over my speech, over my talk, over my communication. That when I speak to people, I minister strength to them, comfort to them, edification to them. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And then you see, that's what being a Christian is all about. It is not just having the Spirit, but the Spirit must have you. The Spirit must rule your life. And that's what Paul is talking about. And last week also, we said having the Spirit is one time a spirit. Alright, so at New Bar, we have the Spirit of Christ, we have the Spirit of uh, the Son of God, the Holy Spirit sent into our heart. But you see, being filled with the Spirit is not a one time a spirit. It's a continuous it's a progressive experience. Do you know why? Because none of us ever yielded fully, completely to the Holy Spirit at once. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Are you with me? There are times that I yielded to the Spirit, alright? And I enjoy it and I say, wow, look at that. But there are other times that I struggle to yield. Do you understand? So that's why the Bible says, be filled. It's a continuous something. Not that I did it last Sunday. No, you have to seek to do it every day of your life. So as you wake up, you yield yourself, your tongue, your mouth, you yield to the Spirit, your, your mind, your emotions, you bring it under the control and the government of the Spirit. Are, are you with me? Praise God. Hallelujah. So it is something you do consciously, continually. It is something you don't do one time, it's something you do consistently. Because we don't stay feel of the Spirit. Do you understand what I'm talking about? We don't stay feel of the Spirit. That's why the command is a continuous something. Something we do. It is not a one-time experience. So what am I saying so that we can move forward? 
So being filled with the Spirit or letting God Spirit fill me is simply being Spirit centered, living a Spirit centered life, a Spirit led life. All right, not emotion driven life. It's, it simply means living a Spirit driven life. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That you are not driven by the natural senses. You are not dominated by natural reality, by things happening around you, by what someone says to you. All right, but you are being led, you are being controlled, you are being governed by the Spirit of God. And when I say by the Spirit of God, you know the Spirit inspired the Scripture. I'm talking of by the Word of God. Because the Spirit can never lead you contrary to what is clearly stated in the Word of God, especially in the New Testament. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So when I talk about uh, uh, being filled with the Spirit, I'm simply talking about you are living a Spirit-animated, Spirit-energized, spirit power life, alright? You are not trying to do the will of God in the strength of the flesh or in the energy of the flesh. You are not trying to do what God has told you to do by your natural human wisdom. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Because that's a recipe for frustration. Do you get it? Alright? Trying to do, oh, yes, this is what God has come me to do and then I'm going to do it by myself, in my strength, in my own wisdom. That's a recipe for failure and frustration. You're going to get drained. That's why a lot of people get so drained, so exhausted, even in the process of serving the Lord. You know why? Because we do it in the flesh. We do it in our own strength. That's not what God wants from all. So being filled with the Spirit is you let the Spirit inspire. You let the Spirit steer you up. You let the Spirit energize you. You let the Spirit empower you. The Spirit quicken you. Are, are you with me? And when you do the, the, the will of God, you do it with ease. And people wonder, how do you do it? All right, it is because it is the spirit of God that is energizing you. It is the spirit of God that is animating you, empowering you, and strengthening you to do the will of God. And one good thing before we move forward. Now, listen to this. Now, it is not God that determines or decides the extent to which I'm going to be filled with the spirit. Are you with me? Alright. It is not that God just look at me and say, you know what? I'll be filled with the spirit today. Alright, no. That is not God's call. It is my call. So I am the one that decides. I'm the one that is fully, completely responsible for the extent to which or the degree to which I'm going to be controlled by the Spirit. Do, do, you, do you understand what I'm talking about? I am the one that decides that. I decide for, for the, the, the extent to which I'm going to be yielded. In other words, I set the boundary, all right? Now, Spirit of God can lead me and guide me in this area, but in this area, I'm just going to follow my senses, all right? So I decide that. And the Spirit will lead me to the extent to which I allow Him to lead me. Do, do you understand what I'm talking about? The same thing with flowing the gift of God. It is not God that decides the extent to which He's going to use us. We decide the extent, the degree to which God is going to use us by our yieldingness to Him and to His Spirit. Do you understand what I'm talking about? All right. Now, so these are the things that we have uh, uh, covered, and I just want to move uh, forward today. And what we're going to focus on today, uh, I remember when I was uh, uh, planning and putting together my notes and things like that, and I was trying to compress the whole thing so that I could finish, uh, conclude the teaching today, all right? And then the Spirit of the Lord asked me, so why why, why are you uh, bent on finishing it today? And I said, yeah, because I just want to finish it. You understand? And uh, I, I know from a spirit that when God asks me that it means that's foolish things to do, all right? So I, I'm just going to take it slowly. So it's like the Lord is saying, why the rush? All right, and I have to ask myself like that. So why the rush? All right, so relax and let's go uh, into the word of God. So uh, what we are considering today is why is it vital? Why is it necessary uh, for you as a believer, for me as a believer, to live a Christ, a, a, a spirit center, spirit driven, spirit controlled life? Why is that necessary? Why can't I just be fleshly driven, all right? Why can't I just allow my feelings to rule me, all right? Why can't I just be led by my gods? Why can't I just be controlled, dominated by my senses? Why can't I just uh, uh, let my life go by people's or popular opinion? Why do I have to follow the Spirit, not just in one aspect of my life, but in every aspect of my life? Why is that important? Why can't I just be satisfied with having the Spirit? Why must I allow the Spirit to have me, not uh, one time, but all the time? 
Why, why, why do I, I want to yield more and more to the Spirit of God? And we are going to answer that question. Why it is vital for all to live a Spirit-filled, Spirit-control, and Spirit-power life. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Quickly, follow me to the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Now, two things, and we're going to dwell on that very well. We're going to uh, look at the scripture. Now, the simple reason why it is very vital, why it is compulsory, why it is important uh, for you as a child of God, for you as a believer who have the Spirit, to let the Spirit have you, to let the Spirit rule you, control, dominate you, because it takes that, it takes you yielding to the Spirit to walk like Jesus Christ. I'm talking of W-A-L-K. That is to live like Christ. To conduct yourself like Christ. And not only that, it takes you being spirit led, being spirit controlled, being spirit governed for you to also walk like Christ. W-O-R-K. So, now, so why is it necessary to be spirit led, to be spirit guided, to walk like Christ? That is W-A-L-K. To live like Christ. To conduct yourself like Christ and also to walk like Christ. W-O-R-K. That is to do the works of Christ. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And how many of us agree with me that Christ live a supernatural life? Is that right? Christ live and overcome and triumph and fulfill life even in the midst of the world that did not love him, that did not want him. Do you understand what? He fulfilled his ministry. He fulfilled his purpose. All right, so he lived a life that is far beyond reproach. You know, when they wanted to uh, crucify him, the Bible said they sought for witnesses against him and they found no. And you know, the people they got, foolish people, they said, Oh, we had something against him. He said, We had it, I pulled down this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. That's the only thing they had against him. The Bible said, The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the teacher, they came to trap him by his words, they could not. They had nothing on him. Even Satan tempted him. He found nothing on him. Do you understand? Now, that is a life that we are called to live. And we're going to see one of the things I want us to see is that Christ did not live that life, that supernatural life, that overcoming life, that righteous life, that godly life that he lived, and all the works he did, the supernatural work, the miracle that he did, he did not do any of it as God. This is important to understand. Because when we talk of Jesus, you know, we know, oh, that's God in the flesh. That's true. While he was on earth, he was fully God. That's true. But that's not a complete truth. Jesus on earth was fully God, but he was also fully man. So he lived a righteous life, not as God, but as man. A man yielded to the Spirit. He did all the miracles he did, not as God, but as a man empowered, anointed by the Spirit. So Jesus is our standard. Jesus is our molded. Jesus is our example. So if I'm going to live the life that he lived, if I'm going to walk as he walked, if I'm going to do the works that he did, then I need to also yield to the Spirit just as he yielded to the Spirit. Do you get it? Now quickly, let's look at Philippians chapter 2. In the book of Philippians, Paul, I read from Amplified. Philippians 2, I read from verse 5. Let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility, who although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, possessing the fullness of the attribute which made God God, did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grabbed or retained. Now, what was Paul talking about? That even though Jesus was God, but when he came into this world, he did not hold on to the attributes of God. Now, look at verse 7. But stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity, so as to assume the guise of a servant that is a slave, in that he became like men and was born a woman being. So what Paul was saying to us is that Jesus Christ, all right, when he came into the world, he divorced himself, he emptied himself, he stripped himself of his rights, of his privileges as God. Are you with me? So he did not come as God. That is why he was hungry. God can never be hungry, all right? That is why he was tired. God will never be tired. That is why he had to sleep. God neither sleep nor slumber. So while he was on earth, even though he was God, he did not come in the regalia of God. He did not come with the attributes of God, with all the glory and the powers of God. He came just like a man, like any one of us. 
All right, and Acts chapter uh, 2, verse 22. This is important true to understand. Acts chapter 2, you see, uh, Peter, Simon Peter, when he was preaching his first sermons on the day of Pentecost. Look at what he said, men of Israel, hear this word, Jesus of Nazareth, a man, not God, a man attested that is approved, endorsed by God to you by miracles. Wonders and signs which God did through him in your midst, as you yourself also know. So you see, Peter was telling all the man Jesus. Are you with me? Not God. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. Paul says the same thing for there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man what? Christ Jesus. So while he came, he was what? The man Christ. That is why he had to be anointed. He had to, you know, God doesn't need any anointing, all right? Because he came as a man. And so he was born of the Spirit. Now, I want you to look at it because the goal of Christianity, the standard, the model is Jesus Christ. So we are called to live as he lived. We are called to follow in his example. Is that right? We are called to walk as he walked. We are called to do the works that he did and greater works than what he did. But how was he able to do it? All right. And one of the things we are looking at that he did not do any of those things as God. Jesus did not overcome temptation as God. He overcame temptation as a man like me, like yourself. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That is it. But how did he do it? By the Spirit. By the help of the Spirit. By being controlled by the Spirit. So Jesus was not just born of the Spirit. Of course, we know he was born of the Holy Spirit. The angel told Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Luke chapter 1, 34, 35. But you see, when Jesus was being baptized, John saw a vision. In John 3, 6, he said, Behold, the heavens were opened, and I saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove alighting upon him. Now, I wanted to look at Jesus Jesus, now when he wanted to start his heartly ministry, the Bible said the Holy Spirit had to come upon him. Why? Because he was just a man like us. Are you listening to me? And there's no way he will be able to live the life that God wants him to live and, and fulfill his ministry and calling without the enabling of the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 4, we read that he was filled with the Spirit. Luke chapter 4 from verse 1, then Jesus being what? Being filled with the Holy Spirit. Returned from the Jordan and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So you see, Jesus, I, I, I'm just trying to walk you through Jesus' life. All right? He was filled with the Spirit. He was led by the Spirit. Uh, verse 14 of that Luke chapter 4 says, He returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. Acts chapter 10 verse 3, Peter said, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? Holy Ghost and power. And then he went about doing good, healing all those who are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He did all that because he was energized. He was empowered by the Spirit of God. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, he will not be able to do that. Are you following me? In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus, when he was accused that he was casting out demons by Beelzebub, look at what he said to them. In verse 20, Matthew chapter 12, verse 20, but if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon me. Now look at what he said. He said, I cast out devils. I cast out demons by what? By the Spirit of God. So what do we see when you look at the life of Jesus from the incarnation? He was born of the Spirit, baptized by the Spirit. Are you following? Now, he was driven by the Spirit, led by the Spirit, governed by the Spirit, anointed by the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit, and all that he did, he did it by the Spirit. Do you know why? Because God is showing to us how he wants us to live our lives. He's our model. Amen. Jesus Christ. But he yielded to the Spirit. Now, you know we also, we are born of the Spirit. How many of us know that? Being born again is being born of the Spirit, all right? But being born of the Spirit is not what guarantees a victorious life. Are you with me? You can be born of the Spirit. Having the Spirit in you and still live uh, a terrible life, all right? Still live an ungodly life. Still live an unrighteous life. Being overcome by temptations and all that, all right? You can still have the Spirit and still live a frustrated life. You can still have the Spirit and yet not fulfill God's purpose for your life. But we see that Jesus did not just have the Spirit. He was led by the Spirit. In other words, he allowed himself to be what? To be led by the Spirit. Don't forget, this was God in the flesh. But because he came as a man, what did he do? He yielded to the Spirit. 
He submitted to the leading of the Spirit. He surrendered himself to the Spirit. And you know why he did that? He was showing us an example of how to live our life. And that's why we're learning all this. So if Jesus could not uh, live in this world without the help of the Spirit, without being yielded to the Spirit, being led by the Spirit, being driven by the Spirit, being controlled by the Spirit. So how dare do I think that I can live a victorious life without yielding to the Spirit? This was Jesus. How dare do I think that I can do the will of God, do the work of God without yielding to the Spirit? How dare do I think that I can overcome temptation without the power of the Spirit? If God in the flesh could not do that. First John chapter 2 verse 6, the Bible says, He who says he abides in him that is in Christ, hurt himself also to walk just as he walked. So, you as a child of God, as a believer, as a Christian, you are called to do what? To walk just as Christ walked. Amplify, render it more beautiful. Uh, first John chapter 2 verse 6, Amplify. Whoever says he lives in Christ, that is, whoever says he has accepted him as God and Savior, heart as a moral obligation, it's compulsory, it's not optional, it's like a death. You ought to do what? To walk and conduct himself just as he walked, just as he conducted himself. Can you see? So being a Christian, being a child of God, the Bible says you ought, it's a moral, it's compulsory. It's a spiritual obligation. It's a death. So I have to walk as Jesus walked. I have to conduct myself as Jesus conducted himself. And we just read, how did he do it? He did that by what? Yielding to the Spirit. I cannot walk as Christ walked if all I do is to gratify the desires of the flesh. All I do is what I feel like doing. All right? No. No, you can't, you can't walk as he walked. Because when you yield to the flesh, what you are going to produce or manifest is what is called the works, the activities of the flesh. Are you with me? And that does not bring any glory to God. If Jesus had yielded to the flesh, those uh, accusers of him, they would have found so many things to use against him. But because he yielded to the spirit, and he did that consistently from the beginning of his life to the very end, and he became a molder, a standard, and a sample for all. So we don't just yield to the spirit uh, on Sunday morning. Uh, are you paying attention? We yield to the spirit every day of our life. That is the way Christ walked. And the Bible said that is the way we ought to walk. Amplify Ephesians chapter 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, become imitators of God. Copy him and follow his example. What are we following? The examples of Christ who yielded to the spirit. He allowed himself to be led. He allowed himself to be governed, to be anointed, to be empowered by the spirit. As well beloved children, imitate their father. Walk continually in love that is value one another. Practice empathy and compassion, unselfishly seeking the best for others, just as Christ also loves you. So you see, everything we do as a Christian, it must be what? Just as Christ. It's the standard, it's the standard. Now, you don't compare yourself with, with another one, alright? You don't even compare yourself with your pastor. You compare yourself with who? With Christ. It is just as Christ did. And that's our goal in this church. That's our desire, that each one of us will set it. And you know, one thing about our spiritual thing is that if you don't set it as goal, if you don't desire it, if you don't pursue it, you will never experience it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You have to desire it. You have to set it that Jesus is my example. All right? I'm called to walk as he walked, to conduct myself as he conducted himself. I want us to look at Ephesians chapter 4. You see, the, the overall purpose of God blessing us all uh, with uh, many gifts in the church, with apostle, prophet, uh, 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 evangelist, uh, pastor and teacher. God has something in mind. And let's look at that. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, the reason why you have to yield to the Spirit is that you may walk as Christ walked, alright? That you may conduct yourself as Christ conducted himself, and so bring glory to God. Are you paying attention? That even when people seek, uh, just like uh, the people sought uh, for fault in Christ, they won't find no. 
Look at that, Ephesians chapter 4. I want to read, easy to read version. Because of time, I'm going to jump into it. All right, from verse 11. The Bible says, Christ gave this gift to people. He made some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to go and tell the good news, that is the evangelist, some to care for and teach God's people. That's a pastor. Now, Christ gave this gift to prepare God's holy people for the work of serving, to make the body of Christ stronger. Now, pay attention to verse 13. Is it to read version? This work must continue until we are all joined together in what we believe, in what we know about the Son of God. Our goal, what is our goal? Is to become what? Like a full grown man to look just like Christ and have all his perfections. Quickly, verse 15. Know that we will speak the truth with love. We will grow to be like what? Like Christ in every way. So that's the goal. That's the Father's goal for all. That's why we come to church. That's why we have pastors. That's why we have teachers. That's why we have apostles and prophets. The Bible says it is so that they may teach us, they may equip us, that we may grow to be like Christ in every way. And we will never attain that if we struggle with the Spirit, if we refuse to let the Spirit uh, uh, lead us, to guide us, to control us. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It is something we have to do. This is the Father's heart. This is the Father's desire. This is the Father's expectation. That everyone in his family will be like the firstborn. Will be like Christ in every way. Do you understand what I, in every aspect, in the way Christ loved, that is the way the Father wants us to love. In the way he suffered and endured, that's the way the Father wants us to endure. In the way he was kind and gentle, that's the way the Father wants us to be kind and gentle. In the way he forgives so easily, that's the way the Father wants us to forgive. And we will not be able to do that if we don't get filled with the Spirit. Because Christ never did it without the help of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand? All right. Now look at it in Amplify. Amplify Ephesians chapter 4. Quickly, I want to jump to uh, verse 11. And his gifts to the church were varied, and he himself appointed some apostles, special messenger representative, some as prophet who speak a new message from God to the people, some as evangelists who spread the good news of salvation, some as pastors and teachers to shepherd, guide, and instruct. And he did this to fully equip and perfect the same God's people for works of service. To so build up the body of Christ the church. Look at verse 13. Until we all reach oneness in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God, growing spiritually to become what? A mature believer, reaching to the measure of the fullness of Christ. What does that mean? Manifesting his spiritual completeness, exercising our spiritual gift in unity. Verse 15 says, But speaking the truth in love, in all things, both our speech. And our life expressing his truth. Let us grow up in all things into him that is into Christ. Following his example who is the head, the Christ. The same Ephesians chapter 4. I want to read uh, Amplified Classic Edition verse 13 and 15. He said that we might, the reason why we have all the gifts in the church, that we might develop until we all attain oneness in the faith, in the comprehension of the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God, that we might arrive where? At a real mature manhood. And he called it the completeness of personality, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. Can you see the lofty goal the Father has set for us? Christ's own height of perfection. You say, but why will the Father set such a lofty high goal for all? Do you know why? Because what made Christ, what helped Christ to attain that goal is available to us. Do you understand? The Holy Spirit helped him. We saw that he did nothing except by the Spirit. From his bad, born of the Spirit, baptized by the Spirit, driven by the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, anointed with the Spirit. He did all the work by the Spirit. And the Father said, you know what? All that he did, that is my goal for you. I want you to attain his, his standard. I want you to attain his perfection. I want you to express uh, God's uh, uh, divine attribute just like Jesus expressed it. The Father wants us to express and manifest the power of the Holy Ghost, just like Christ. Are you with me? Not a little lower than Christ, just like Him. He's our molder, he's our standard. Is somebody listening to what I'm talking about? Verse 15 says, Rather let our lives lovingly express truth in all things, speaking truly, dealing truly, living truly, just like Christ did. Enfolded in love. Let us grow up in every way and in all things into Him, who is here, even Christ, the Messiah, 
the anointed one. Glory be to God. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, uh, message Bible verse 15. Look at what they put it. He said, God wants us to grow up. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15, message Bible. God wants us to grow up to know the whole truth and tell it in love like Christ in everything. We take our lead from Christ who is the source of everything we do. All right, and if we are taking our lead from Christ, what do we see in Christ? A life that is spirit centered. Are you paying attention? That is what we see in Christ. A life that is spirit led. That's what we see in Christ. A life that is spirit ruled. That's what we see in Christ. Even when he was facing the cross, are you paying attention? And everything within him, the flesh was saying, no, don't take of this cup. Don't drink of this cup. Don't face the cross. Don't die for them. All right. He said, no, no, not as I will, but as the Father will. Do you know what he was doing? He was yielding to the Spirit. So we take our lead from him. This is important. And you know what? As we close, not only does the Father just want us to live like Christ, conduct ourselves like Christ, but the Father actually wants us to do the work that Christ did. And of course, you know, Jesus, before he left, he told his disciples, John 14, 12, Most assuredly, I say to you, who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do. Let someone say the works he did. I want to hear you say the works he did. I will also do. Greater works. I will do. But of course you know you can't do that in your own strength. Is that possible? Of course not. You can't cast out demons by just uh, being able to speak correct English. Alright? Demons don't... Uh, pay respect for that. They don't understand that. You understand what I'm talking about? You can't do that, all right? It has to be done by the... Jesus said it. He said, I cast out demons by what? By the Spirit of God. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and power, and then he went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So it has to be done in the strength of the Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And that's what the Father wants from us. Jesus told his disciple when he rose up, he said, do what? Go into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. And you know what? He didn't just tell them, just go and preach. No, that's not what he said to them. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, you know what he said to them? Matthew 10, 7 and 8, he said, as you go, preach. Saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And what do you do? Heal the sick. Let's not say heal the sick. All right? Now, he didn't say, when you meet the sick, call on Jesus to heal the sick. No. But see, most of the time, that's what we do. We say, oh, Lord Jesus, come and heal this us." But no, that's not what the Father called us to do. That's not what Jesus instructed us to do. But you see, most of the time, the reason why we pray like that is because we are not yielding to the service. The reason why we pray like that is because we have not uh, got used to the Spirit empowering us, leading us, guiding us. The reason why some of us cannot even open our mouths are to preach the gospel is because we are not yielded. If you yield to the Spirit, it will fill you with boldness. It will put the word. It will give you utterances to speak. It will give you wisdom to start the conversation. So you see, you can't really live the Christian life. You can't do it without the help of the Holy Spirit. He said, heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. So be filled with the Spirit is for all to walk as Christ walk. It's for all to do the works that Christ did. And when you look around, there are so much work to do. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? Are you with me? There are a lot of people that have not really reached, understood the gospel. Some have not even truly heard what the good, the, the true gospel is. There are a lot of people in bondage. There are a lot of people that come to church with heaviness. They come to church, you know, seeking for answer from God. How is God going to speak to them? God is going to use us. But if we don't yield to the Spirit, how is God going to use us? And you see, it's something we have to learn. We have to let. You see, the Spirit is, is more willing than we are ever willing. Are, are you paying attention to what I'm talking about? Some years ago, as a, a, a young believer, I want to close to this. I went for a personal retreat, all right? I, and asked me what I was asking God. I was asking God, fill me with the Spirit, anoint me, uh, use me, and all that kind of a thing, all right? And one of the things, as I got there, I, I planned to be there for three days, holy alone by myself, fasting, praying, all right? And then the Lord said to me, as I got there, he said, no, don't pray that prayer. I am looking for who to use more than you are willing to be used. 
Give yourself to me, I will use you. There's no need asking God, use me. No, just yield yourself. Just, just surrender yourself, I will use you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? There's no need to beg God to use you. Do you understand? God needs laborers. He needs people that he wants to flow through. But it's not going to forcefully hijack our life. It's not going to force and bend your will. You have to yield it. You have to say, Lord, no longer is I will, no longer what I want, no longer pursue my ambition. You reveal your plan, you reveal your will, and I will just follow it. And that's what it means to be filled with the Spirit. And you know what, as we conclude, when we allow the Spirit to truly take hold of our life, our life is going to be a blessing to a lot of people. Do you understand? When people come to church and when they are going back, they are going back with joy, with comfort of the Lord. Do you know why? Because we have yielded ourselves to the Spirit to use us to minister to one another. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Let me close with this. Uh, in our church, uh, back in Trinidad, there was this Sunday, you know, and uh, uh, we had the service as usual, and uh, during the service, I was kind of struggling, you know, when the pastor is struggling, all right? But then, uh, uh, somehow, God helped me. And uh, I, I was able to yield to the Spirit and uh, was able to call two cases, two uh, peculiar cases, and just, you know, I didn't know what came upon me, but I, was, I knew I was not at my best. I was struggling. And, uh, but then, somehow, I was able to still communicate uh, uh, the Word of God uh, 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 to, to this one. I don't know, but I just spoke and said, the Lord just spoke to me about uh, these two persons. One, I mentioned the case. The other one, I mentioned the case. And at the end of the service, they brought two people to me who just came for the first time. All right? And uh, this was this uh, lady and her son. And the lady was crying. And I said, what happened? Did anything go wrong in the service? He said, no. He said, you know what? I was driving to this service. Somebody begged me to come and things like that. Because I thought that God has forgotten me. God has forsaken me. You understand that he was going through a lot of pains. And he said, but why you are about to close the service? All right? He said, you said something. And that was exactly what was wrong with me. And not only me, but this my son as well. And he said, right there. I said, okay. So God, you have not forgotten me. Out of all these people... You talk directly to me. You spoke to me. He said, that was me, Pastor. And that was, you see, as she was saying that, I was also kind. Do you know why? Because I was so much in a haste to finish that service. Do, do you understand what I'm talking about? I don't know where I was going, but I was so much in a haste. But the Spirit kept nudging me to speak about this particular person. Not knowing that that is all, all the message I preached, the beautiful teaching. She didn't gain anything from that. Do you understand? All that she wanted was that God, why will you, how, how did you forget me like that? And God wanted to pass it to her that look, I'm mindful of you. I've not forgotten about you. She needed to hear that. She needed that assurance. And God was speaking to me, but I was so much bent on closing the service and forgetting about everything. And then I learned a lesson. I said, how good it would be to yield more to the spirit. Because if that lady had come and I'm gone, then who knows, that may be the last time we ever, she will ever step into any church. Because she said, it's, I, I, I'm already fed up. But that changed everything. That God could pick me and God spoke to me. God spoke about my son among all these people. That was all that God, God dealt with. And I said to myself, if I have closed the service as I was hurriedly closing, even though I was having that nudging in my spirit, but yet I just wanted to close the service. You see, if we yield more to the spirit, our life is going to work. You don't have to be on the pulpit to do that. And you listen to what I'm talking about, ministering to one another. People come to the church at times, all they need is an answer from the law, assurance from the law. They need a comfort from the law. And do you know what? You have the spirit in you, and the spirit wants to, 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 to express. The spirit is seeking for expression. The spirit wants to communicate, speak to the person by your side, encourage them, comfort them. But most of the time, we are not yielded to the spirit. We just want to go about our normal business. We just want to keep to ourselves. I want you to rise to your feet. Look. You will not be a blessing to anyone if you allow your life to just be flesh driven, if you are just flesh focused, and you are not yielded to the Spirit. The Lord is speaking to you. Yield more to the Spirit. There are people at a place of war, there are people in our neighborhood. There are people we see every day that the Spirit wants to speak to them. The Spirit wants to touch them. There's something they are going through. And you know what? The Spirit wants to use you to be a blessing, a channel, to communicate the love, the comfort of God to them. 
But look, you've got to yield to the Spirit to let the Spirit do that. He's not going to forcefully do that. You have to learn to do it. That's the only way we can walk like Christ. That's the only way we can do the works He did and greater work than what He did. I just wanted to pray and say, Holy Spirit, I yield myself. I yield myself. My mind. I yield my mind. I yield my thought. My thinking process. I yield my will to you. I lay down. I want you to say, Holy Spirit, take more of me. More of me. More of me. You don't need more of him. He needs more of you. He needs more of you. Can we just pray and ask the Holy Spirit? More, more. I yield myself. I give myself to you. Oh, let's open our mouth and ask the Holy Spirit. Take more of me. Now, there are many areas of our life that we don't allow the Spirit to have any say. But this evening, God is speaking to you. There should be no closed door in your life to the Spirit. The Spirit must be able to lead you, guide you, instruct you in every aspect of your life. He must be able to rule your choices, your decision. That is what being a Christian is all about. It is being spirit-filled. You cannot be a Christian without being spirit-filled. You cannot live a, a triumphant and overcoming Christian life. Your life can be a blessing to anyone if you are not spirit-filled, spirit-led, spirit-centered, spirit-ruled, spirit-dominated. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we know you are willing to use us more than we are willing to be used. And so, Father, we just yield ourselves, Father. Lord, we know your spirit dwells in all, but we want your spirit to find full expression in our lives and through all. That, Lord, you will speak through all. You will heal the sick, preach the gospel, Father. That, Lord, souls will be saved, Lord, disciple, strengthen and power, Father. That men and women that come in contact with us, Father, their life will not remain the same, Lord. They will experience the love, the power, the glory of God because we are yielded to your spirit. Help us, Lord Jesus. Every resistance to the Spirit we remove right now. Every disobedience we crush right now. In the name of Jesus. We say, Holy Spirit, there is no, no out of ban in our life. There is no aspect of our life that is out of reach, out of your ban. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. We hope you have been challenged, encouraged, and motivated to become more like Christ by today's teaching. If you would like to find out more about Errands of Revival and get additional teachings and materials for your healthy, spiritual growth, visit our website today at www.eradsofrevival.org or if you would like to enroll at our School of Discipleship, visit our website www.theschoolofdiscipleship.org.uk This teaching was made possible by the prayers and generous free will offering, donation, and gifts from partners like you. You are welcome into partnership with us today. For information on how to become a partner, please call one 292 292 9270 or 1868-703-5572. Or you can email us at info at erasofrevival.org.uk. Thanks for listening.